Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It has been a while and I figured I'd come back today and show you a updated capacities tour. This is a capacities space, just one, um, of a person completely obsessed with history because I'm doing a history project this year called 12 in 12. This space is set up to look after that, but this space is basically the same as what it was when I was an international relations master's student and when I was just generally interested in taking notes before that. The way this is set up is indicative of how I approach PKM. So in this video, you'll get little glimpses of how I deal with PKM as a whole, but I am planning a properly separate video about that, which you will either have already seen or will be seeing soon. So let's get into it because I film this multiple times and every time it's taking me like half an hour and I feel bad about that. So let's stop talking and get on with it. Now, my PKM is bottom up in the sense that somebody tells me something in a source, I extract what is interesting or contextually important and then I kind of knit it all back together into kind of new meanings and that's usually maps of content or big research questions or something like that. So I structure this space in that way. So instead of starting at the top with eras, which are the biggest, broadest overview of history that I can think to do, we're going to start at the bottom. Now, we'll get these three out the way. These are basically all archived. At one time I needed them, I no longer do. I should simply export everything from there and then delete them. But when I open this space, my brain like lights up and it's ready to learn. I don't really want to spend time deleting things. So I just leave them. They're not hurting anybody. Then I have definitions. There's lots of words to learn when you're reading and I just wanted a simple place to put them. For example, I have seen this word a hundred times in my life, never once thought to look it up. So recently I did as part of the medieval world and I put it in here. I'm using the index card layout. You'll see that a lot because it is small and it reminds me that I'm not here to take great long notes about definitions. I'm just here to use them to help me along in my learning. Then we have sparks. Now, again, you can see it's another index card layout. It's quite small. Sparks are at the bottom because I consider these to be things that are not ready to join the PKM pipeline, which officially begins with media. They are things that I want connected in capacities for some reason. So here I wanted to remember that next time I have a look at the East India Company, there is a TV show that I can watch that has a portrayal of it. Um, I used to do this for way more movies and TV shows, but I never actually started watching them. So I just got rid of most of them. But this one survived for some reason. These sparks are just there. They're just there if I want them. I don't have to touch them. There's no pressure. I look at them like once a month maybe, um, but they're not part of my full on PKM pipeline. And then basically everything above sparks up until media, all of these, these are capacities built in object types. I don't think about them, but you can't really edit anything about them. You just, you just, you just have access to them. So every image you upload is an image. You can see I have a lot. Every PDF you upload, every web link, all of that, all there. I try not to actually take notes in any of these pages, including with the actual pages. Maybe it's better to say, I'm not going to learn anything from what's on a page. My learning is captured elsewhere, but these are where I might organise how I'm learning. That seems fair. So that's the bottom of that. I've got loads of those, but you know, the attention really needs to be paid to everything happening from media up until eras. Now, 95% of all information that is in this space and all the knowledge up here has come from a piece of media. The point of a media object is to hold the summarised information about what I have been told by a source. So the way I think about it is, this is the source that is telling me things and everything beneath it is what I have been told. I make sure I really understand what I have been told and that process is facilitated by summarising it so that at that point I can create links to other content. I used to link, link my like literature notes which were just messy and horrible and it may, made my backlinks messy and horrible and that really annoyed me. So these media pages hold good summaries and they have a lot of outward links. What things do I connect to? Well, that is the next section. I think about 
media as what I have been told about something. And then everything I link to are the things that I have been told about by this book. And it, because this is capacities, you group the things by their type. So, for example, just in this sentence alone, I have been told about many locations. I've linked the one I'm most interested in as Angers. And I've also been told about events such as the First Crusade. And I've also been told about people such as the English monarchs who were part of the Angevin dynasty. They're very straightforward in the sense that it's pretty obvious what the parameters of those are. An event has um, always got a backlink because I create it from other pages. It's got years, it's got related people. People are the same. I did ask the AI to introduce me to Henry because I didn't know anything about him at the first time, but now he's got loads of backlinks I need to go through and he's also got a lot more information. And then locations and notes are just a little bit different. Um, you'll see in the note-taking video that the point of this section of my capacities is to learn about a thing in particular. And the way that I know what I know about a thing is by looking at the backlinks and writing a summary of them, I suppose, because they all came from media. So I know it's all referenced information um, and it's all on the page and it's very much bottom up in that way. But the reason locations are different are I'm probably not going to be interested in this castle to the point where I want notes on it. But what's important to me as a history nerd is I want to know where history happened. And I'm just really interested in the fact that this castle has such a long history that it's kind of related to William the Conqueror. And later on, the Howard family, which I know become important later on in English history, and that the anarchy, but it was also all part of it. So I'm not interested in knowing about the architecture of the castle, why it's built the way it is, like any of that. I'm interested in what history was taking place there. And in that way, I kind of i am thinking about locations as an entity, something I can link to, rather than something I want to write about. Whereas for everything else, I do want to write about them, that's why they're there. And then finally, we have notes. If you're thinking to yourself, why don't you use pages to write notes on? It's because I have notes instead. And the reason I have notes rather than pages is for this simple reason. I like properties because I like queries and I want to have the option to add whatever properties I like. With any of the basic object types and capacities, which are all of this from queries to daily notes, you can't edit anything. In some ways that's great because you don't have to think about it, it just works. But I wanted a place where I could write about something generally, a thing that I had been told about by a book, but I wanted to have the flexibility to add properties. So I created notes, which are my version of pages. I hope that makes sense. But this is just like people and events where eventually I'll come and read the backlinks, write up what I know about them onto this page. And at that point I can say, here's what I know about the Angevin Empire. And crucially, here's what I don't know about the Angevin Empire. And I know that all of this has come from my reading. That's a media object, that's a media object, etc. So that's that bit. Now, technically, books and TV shows and stuff might also make me ask questions. So I put them in here. Sometimes these are questions that I ask the AI before AI chats were a thing. Sometimes they're just open thoughts I have in my mind that I'm probably not going to get around to closing for a while, but I want to remember that they're there. Right at the beginning of January, when I was starting this project, I was like, who is the Frankish Empire? I didn't understand it. So I asked ChatGPT and instead of saving it as an AI chat, I just put it into this question page and pulled out the really important bit that I could quickly refer back to and put it in a nice pink box. Um, so the questions I don't use too much, but I like to have them there. And I also often like to add what the question was inspired by because I like to track my curiosity. I think it's beautiful to watch it grow. Obviously, books also have quotes, films have quotes, and I like to put them in here. My favourite quote I've ever seen so far is this. This was in Trust, 
which won a bunch of prizes last year. Um, it's a book. I think the fact that the author created a quote where there is so much history condensed into so few words, I just find it fascinating as kind of the subject matter, but also how he's done it. So I created a quote and I gave it the tag of Hall of Fame, which is where I put everything that I think is better than five star. And I'm not going to do a bunch of work on this, but what I can do is use it to remind myself of other things. So when I was reading this big book about New York, it was a fiction book, the way that they were talking about New York in the Roaring Twenties and New York is this huge finance capital, I was reminded of this quote and I embedded it. So these two bits are, again, a little bit different because I'm not doing a bunch of work on them, but I absolutely want to keep them. And that's why they're purple and not yellow or orange. And then we have Atomic Ideas. It's hard for me to explain this one because I don't fully get it myself. Um, I've got 66. Um, I used to call them good points and that was probably an easier way for me to conceptualise them. Just what do I read and think, mm, good point. I'll write that down here. In fact, I think, I think it's time to change this back to good points. I don't know who I thought I was using a term I don't understand. Good point. There we go. And that's why there's the 100 icon. Yeah, I remember now. These are my good points. Anything that I read and think, good point, that gets changed. Then we have intersections. And this was actually created also because of Trust, which was the book I was just mentioning uh, with that cool quote. This is like location in the sense that I probably won't take many notes about this for now. There, there will be a time that I do, but every time I create a new one of these, it's more likely I want an entity to connect things to. Now, what do I actually mean by those words? When I was reading Trust, and then when I was reading New York afterwards, I kept seeing representations of New York in the Roaring Twenties, and I wanted to compare and contrast how they did that. But I was like, hmm, what do I actually link that to? Because they're not sure they're talking about New York, yes. Yes, they're talking about the Roaring Twenties. But what's important about what those books are actually representing is the intersection of those two things. It's not New York, it's not the Roaring Twenties. It is New York in the Roaring Twenties. So I thought about this for some time and then just decided to create an object type for this. Intersections also work incredibly well for state relations. So my undergraduate dissertation looked at an aspect of Franco-German relations. And again, I'm not talking about France. I'm not talking about Germany. I'm talking about the relations of those two states. And when you think about all the other states on the planet and how many of them interact with each other, this could eventually be a ridiculously large object type. But again, I'm just really grateful that I have somewhere to link to specifically to talk about this. So that's my intersections. Then we move further up where uh, we'll use France as the country. All of these things I don't use too much because it's not time. And by that, what I mean is, in order for me to get a grasp of France as a country, I mean, what a huge task that is, I feel like I've got to do more research first. I feel like I want to do more research first. So I am. I'm looking at history this year. Next year, I'm considering doing a deep dive of like some European countries and then moving on to other parts of the world in subsequent years because I'm really enjoying having this project kind of set up. But this is eventually where all of my information about this country will come. The same idea is true of years. So actually related to France as well is 1968, you know, a huge, huge year in modern history and eventually everything specifically about 1968 as this big year, because there's plenty of literature about it, that will come in this page. Similarly, I have eras. This is the one I'm working on right now. And Everything I know about this era will collect on this page. And this is what I mean when I say I'm knitting things back together. I do all of my reading. I extract what I learn about things from that reading. I look at them in more depth. I pick out some interesting questions, some good points, some quotes, and then I link it upwards to things. And this is the map of content thinking, I believe. Um, and I will just put everything I learn about the Middle Ages in the eras. I'll put everything I learn about a given year in the years, everything about a country in a country. 
but sometimes I want to look at other things. So um, I did a deep dive into nuclear power once upon a time, um, I think around the time of Oppenheimer, and I put that in a general map of content. You've seen a map of content before, if you've watched my channel, because of the because of the early modern era. This is the page that my map of content video was based on. Um, this will now change to be an era, but at the time I just had map of content. And yeah, it's just collecting a bunch of stuff about what I've learned and I can use it almost as a playground for working out why it's important that they're kind of all connected and dealt with on the same page. So that's everything. I know I went through that very quickly, but I don't want to keep you too long because I'm not sure how interesting this is to other people. But the message I'd like you to take away from this is this is one person's way of doing PKM incapacities. If yours looks nothing like this, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means it's different. And I would like to encourage us all to think about PKM as a form of play. Nothing is that serious. Nothing is that deep. Just use tools such as capacities to explore the things that you're interested in and have a lot of fun doing it. I think learning about history is fun, hence why it looks like this and my notes are about the subjects they are, but actually even thinking about this stuff is fun and watching it evolve is fun. It's all good fun and I hope that everybody enjoys their time with their note taking apps, whether it's capacities or whether it's something else. So thank you very very much for watching check out the description box for a written version of this if that is more of interest or just as some supplementary material and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!